Welcome, I'm Brian Hayes. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use row level formulas in Salesforce reports. This is a great feature that you might not be aware of in Salesforce and has a lot of different uses. Oftentimes it's good if you wanna count a specific type of value in a report, or if you wanna do some sort of calculation in that report and you don't wanna to have to create a whole other formula field to do it, you can just create that formula in the report itself. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna go into Salesforce here and create a new report. For this example, I'll just make an easy one. We'll take a look at accounts. And now I'm gonna open up the filters here so we've got some data to work with. I've got a simple report here that is showing me a list of all of my accounts, who owns the account, what type of account they are, and what the last modified date was. What we can do with a row level formula is add an additional column to this report here and have it do a calculation on data from that specific row. To do this, click outline on the left-hand side, and you can click the little down arrow where it says columns on the left. Then choose add row level formula, and it's gonna bring up the formula builder. The first example I'll show you is how to count just the customers in this report. So of course, if you just wanted customers, you could filter the entire report down to just show you customers, or you could group by that type field, but maybe we just want to count them without limiting access to that other data. To do that, I'm gonna name this formula customer. The output is gonna be a number. Uh, we don't need any decimal points on that, so I'll change that to zero. And then for our formula, we can then select a field on the left-hand side or functions that we can run against those fields. I'm gonna use the field type. So I'm gonna search for type here, select it, click insert, and that just puts in essentially the API name for that field. So what I'm gonna do here is create a function where I'll check if type is equal to customer, output the number one. Then it's really easy to sum up that column and give us a total count of those customers. To add this, go to functions and search for if. There's our logical function there. At the bottom, it's giving you a little example of how this function works. And you can see that the first thing it's looking for is a logical test. And then we have the output if it's true and the output if it is false. And there's a comma in between those different values. So I'm gonna insert that, there's our example. So the logical test that I want is I wanna see if type is equal to customer. So I'll do type equal and then write out customer in quotes. Now the one thing to know about the type field is that it's actually a pick list. So in order to compare the value of a pick list to just a text value, we need to convert that pick list into text. You can do that by typing text and putting parentheses around that field. And now if it is in fact customer, we want the output to be one. And if it's anything other than customer, the output will be zero. Click validate to make sure that the formula doesn't have any errors, and then you can hit apply. I have an error here that says the report name can't be null. That's actually just referring to the report itself, not this formula, because I haven't given it a name yet. So click apply. Once you see the little check mark and valid show up in the lower left-hand corner, you're good to go. And click apply. And now we have this new column on our row that is either giving us a zero or a one, depending on the value of these fields. Now you can get a lot more complicated with that. Count up all of the contacts who have the name of Brian, as an example, um, or anything else like that. And then to sum it up, you can click down under summarize, under this down arrow here, and choose sum. Now if we run this report, at the top we'll have a count of our total number of customers without actually having to group this report to see that number. Okay, let's take a look at a different row level formula. This time we can do a calculation um, based off the last modified date. Let's say how many days has it been since this has been last modified. To do that, we'll need to modify our row level formula because we're only able to have one, unfortunately. Let's edit this formula. I'm gonna call it days since modified. Again, I'm gonna leave that as a number and then we could insert last update. And what we wanna do is take today and subtract the date of the last update. So you can type in today, open parentheses, close parentheses, minus sign, last update, and that should get us there. Now if you hit validate, we run into an error. The error here says that we have an incorrect parameter uh, or operator. It's expecting a number or a date and it received date time. So what that is telling us is that we tried to subtract last update from today and last update is a date time field when really it's only gonna work with a date field or a number. So in this case, the error is quite helpful. 
it's telling us we need to convert last update from a date time field into a date field. Luckily, there's a function to help us with that. Click on the functions area. We have date value here. And you can see at the bottom, it says it creates a date from its date time or text representation. So insert that, and then we can copy our date value field, put it where the expression should go. And what we get is last update is going to be converted into a date value, and then it's subtracted from today. Click validate, and it's valid. Click apply. There we go. You can see it's been 864 days for a lot of these accounts since they were last updated. And this should get you started with row level formulas. There's lots of other things you can do with them, plenty of use cases out there. But now that you know that it's here, you can start thinking about how to apply it in your own reports. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.